All right, guys, so welcome in to another off season. As you can see here, we finished eight and five on the season, not where we wanted to be, but honestly, not as bad as I thought we'd be. I thought we'd be a lot worse. Um, here you can see our record as our for our coach, 18 and eight, five and four against rivals. We're hoping to fix that, get that up a little bit, especially the top 25, four and six. Granted, I think the six is pretty much like Bama twice. Florida once, Georgia once. I don't know who else it would be. I don't know. There's probably another. Oh, LSU was ranked. So, yeah, I mean, SEC teams are pretty much what they are. So, I don't know if we've lost. I don't know if we've lost to a non SEC team. Now I'm thinking about it. That's pretty good. I'd take that as a win. All right, so as uh, we did last year, we're gonna link everything below so uh, for the off season. So starting with coaching carousel, then going on to like the signing day, I don't know, all that stuff. It's all gonna be linked below. So that way you can skip what you wanna skip um, and go where you wanna go. So I like looking at everything. First, we're gonna start with our season stats. All right, so Harrison Bailey. Had a thousand yards on the season, 13 touchdowns and two interceptions. Brian Maurer had 2,700 yards, 17 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And Jimmy Callaway, our emergency quarterback, ended up walking away with two touchdowns for passing. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Ty Hodge had 600 yards on the season with three touchdowns. Lyndon Whitehead had 260 yards. Uh, with nine touchdowns, he actually technically, if the Syracuse game wouldn't have froze, he would have had, what, 12, I think? So that would have been pretty sick. Um, and then Harrison Bailey also had two rushing. Brian Maurer had two rushing. Jimmy Callaway had two rushing. Jabari Small had three rushing. So, scattered out after that. Looks like Bellis Jones Jr. had a rushing touchdown. I actually didn't, rem I don't remember that. Receiving-wise... Bellis Jones Jr. had 61 catches for 1,100 yards and 9 touchdowns. That's a heck of a year. Ramel Keaton had 52 receptions, 678 yards, 3 touchdowns. D. Beckwith, 45 receptions, 688 yards, 1 touchdown. Cedric Tillman, 41, 477, 2 touchdowns. Jacob Warren, the tight end, 30 receptions, 311 yards, 4 touchdowns. Jalen Hyatt, 28 receptions, 421, 5 touchdowns. Linus Whitehead had 2 touchdowns. And then everyone else kind of scattered throughout. Jimmy Callaway had 3 touchdowns on the year, despite only having 7 receptions. That's a, that's a heck of a ratio there. And here are the defensive stats. I'll kind of show these to you guys. I'm not going to go through everyone, but if you're curious, I'll give you a few few seconds to look through everything pause your video if you need to obviously I don't think we had any defense oh we did have one defensive touchdown uh, kicking wise pretty good for a freshman you only missed one and he didn't miss any extra points so or did he no why does he have a 99 extra point percentage then <laughs> how does that work I don't know. Jalen Hyatt had two kick return touchdowns on the year. Alante Taylor had one. Uh, no punt return, so. All right, now moving on to the coaching carousel. This is always interesting for me. I like to see where everyone goes. Mike Norvell gets fired from Florida State. He is replaced by Mike Denbrook. Excuse me, at five... Five-year contract, head coach at a Ball State. Pete Golding, oh, uh, wow, he was fired after one year. I guess that's what happens, though, when you go 2-10 and ten after making it to the college football playoffs. Roy Calhoun, interesting. Okay. <laughs> interesting hire, to say the least, for, for North Carolina. We'll see how that pans out. P.J. Fleck was uh, was fired. Kevin Kane, defensive ta uh, defensive coordinator from Alabama, takes over. Justin Fuente 
is replaced by Todd Granham, defensive coordinator from Florida. The coach of Navy was hired by Purdue, I guess. That didn't show, I don't know, that's weird. That didn't show up on mine. But he's replaced by Alabama's offensive coordinator. I don't know if that's an upward promotion. Air Force head coach, he left for the North Carolina job. Replaced by Brent Brannon, the head coach from San Jose State. San Jose State hires Pete Golding, who just got fired from North Carolina. Mike Loxley, former Alabama defensive coordinator, right? Definitely from Alabama. Is replaced by Josh Gaddis, Gaddis from... Uh, Michigan offensive coordinator. Mississippi State fires Mike Leach. And they hire Brian Brown, defensive coordinator from Michigan. Ball State, their coach left. Kevin Lynch from the offensive coordinator of Ball State is promoted. But he's from Ball State. That's cool. Kevin Sumlin's fired. Dana Dimmel, the head coach of... Uh, University of Texas El Paso takes over. Nick Rolovich was fired from Washington State. He's replaced by Jim McElwain from Florida. Dana Dimble uh, left to take the head coach job at Arizona. UTEP hires Andy Avalos, the defensive coordinator from Oregon. Michigan's hiring their new offensive coordinator. They're going with Bill Bindenbaugh, the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. So they're going to be running like an air raid. Well, I don't know. Guess not. But ideally they would. Frank Solovich uh, retired from Ohio. He beat Ohio State and he said, you know what? Fuck it. It's not going to get any better than this. Who replaces him? Mike Norvell from, Ohio, uh, from Florida State. I mean, shit, they might be, they might be beating Ohio State more often. Ohio State uh, re-ups their offensive coordinator. Bill Bendenball uh, leaves Oklahoma. He's replaced by Justin Fuente. Kevin Kane leaves. He is replaced by Tyrone Nix from Florida Atlantic. So Nick Saban is still the head coach of Alabama in this, by the way. If you're keeping track. Has not left yet. Uh, Florida hires Jeff Knowles, defensive coordinator at MTSU. Tom Manning uh, left as offensive coordinator of Alabama. He's replaced by Mike New from Navy. Uh, originally Ball State, though. Michigan hires Brian Smith from Troy. Florida hires Bodie Reeder from uh, UT San Antonio. And we're pretty much just going to skip the rest. You know, players leaving. Very, very tough time of the year. Uh, we do have two transfer outs. Kevin Brandt, the uh, really good left in from... Uh, Florida, he's going back to Florida to play for UCF. That's okay. We got like three other guys at the same class and one guy this year, I think. So, it, you know, who knows how much playing time you really would have got anyway. So uh, we wish you luck going forward, Kevin. I know I can stop or try to stop him if I want to, but I'm not going to. Uh, Joseph Goodman, safety. Oh, that's going to hurt. Uh, he's going for playing time. We are already very short. At defensive back, especially safety. So that kind of sucks. Uh, two players possibly getting drafted this year. Lante Taylor and Sean Schamberger. Both are cornerbacks. Obviously, I do not have footage of them playing because we don't play defense. But uh, Cade Mays, I, I thought that he might get drafted, but I guess he didn't. He's just going to go and graduate, and as well as Paxton Brooks. Obviously, don't have any... Thing for them as well. Uh, we do have one for Valus Jones Jr. though. Valus Jones Jr. 
Oh, uh, he's speedy. He didn't always catch the ball. He dropped the ball in some pretty big moments. Uh, maybe some games that we could have won. But nevertheless, he was a lot of fun to play with. He had a thousand yard receiving receive, receiving season as, as a senior. So I have to think that he's at least going to get a tryout from a, from a pro team just from that production alone. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And uh, we wish him luck going forward. Uh, Cro Cron? Tr mm. <clears throat> Cro Crojan? Crojan? I'm going with that. I'm going with Crojan. Crojan Calvert, our left tackle, is also leaving. Uh, Riley Lockyer, our left guard, is also leaving. Losing 
two guys at strong safety, really three, including that transfer out. John Mincy's leaving, Kenneth George is leaving, yeah, so... Uh, a lot of holes to be filled, a lot of positions that uh might not be ready. I don't know, we're gonna see how it turns out. But uh, Valus Jones Jr., the, really the only huge name leaving this year. On offense, at least. And uh, we wish him the luck going forward. Volante Taylor went fourth round. Sean Schamberger went seventh round. So good for them. Give me some transfers. Ah, still no transfers. Sometimes I get like five transfers. Sometimes I get none. It's kind of confusing. I don't fully understand it. All right, moving on to recruiting. I have a few guys left I'd like to get. Uh, we are going to try to make sure we get the people that obviously want to come here. Ross Cowan. We're going to try to make sure we get him. I'm going to put 2500 on Ross. And I'm going to put 2500 on Chad Williams as well. We shouldn't lose them. As long as they commit somewhere, they, I would assume they would commit to us with the 2,000 point lead plus 2,500 going on top of that. Quentin Morrow, pretty good, right? What is he good at? I don't really know. I don't really understand what he's good at. It looks like he might be a good linebacker, defensive end, maybe. I'll put it. I'll put two on him. Not super heartbroken if we don't get him, but I, I want to get every player that we can. Uh, we are going to need the, t the center because we lost a few guys on the line. And uh, you could always use more depth on the line. So I'm going to put 350 on him. 3.5. Alright, so that basically means leaves Michael Brown, Sidney Murphy. We're not going to get Michael Brown. He's too far. He's too far gone. Can we unlock this kid? Is this a thing? Yeah, I've never tried to unlock someone this late. Nick Williams. We're coming for you, bud. I don't want to put a whole lot because we... We really need Sydney Murphy. <laughs> like, really badly, we need Sydney Murphy. So. I might actually take points off of Quentin Morrow. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take my chances on losing Quentin Morrow and go after Sydney Murphy. I know we have another safety right here, but I, I really don't know what it's gonna look like for our defensive back next year. We lost a lot of people. So, we're going to put a lot of points on Sidney Murphy to try to get him. Alright, let's see how we do. Alright, so we did get Sidney Murphy. We lost Nick Williams. That's okay. Well, that's a big get. Sidney Murphy's a big get. We also got Ross Cowan. That's also good. So, all around should be a pretty good class. It said number one. I, I would be surprised if we were number one. We are. That's surprising. I mean, I know we have 13 and fours, but we only... It didn't look like anybody else signed a lot of people either. As I was say, I had like 11 scholarships left over. Uh, so I was expecting someone else to be a little higher. But hey, two number one classes in a row. That I I'm not joking. I never get number one classes. So that's crazy that I got two on, on, on video. And just if you're curious about our coach skill points, I have one in Road Warrior and the rest in... Uh, some recruiting. I didn't want to put... I wanted one locksmith because I didn't think that having three a season um, really made sense. Like, that's just way too much, I think. And then saving factor. To me, to get saving factor, you should probably have won at least one national championship. So I'm going to save that until we win our first national championship. Then I'll, I'll turn on saving factor. All right, but here's the look at our recruits for signing day. I'll take off some of the guys that didn't actually go to us. Oh, we almost got Nick Williams. Did you guys see that? Chad Williams decides not to go anywhere. That kind of sucks. Wish he was just committed to us, considering we were 4,000 ahead on him. Uh, we'll go by overall. 
So the best player is Tyrell Schroeder by far. He's an 81 overall. Well, not by far, I guess, but he's a really good player uh, from Palo Alto, California, the number 11 cornerback. And then we also have Luke Williams from Bull, Idaho, the number one athlete. Uh, Eric Johnson, the number 14 athlete from Burke, Virginia. Sidney Murphy from Vivian, Louisiana, the number three strong safety. Ty Newby, the number three quarterback from Chester, Pennsylvania. Arthur Robinson uh, from Blue Ash, Ohio, the number two strong safety. So for you at home, that's number two and number three strong safety in the nation. Uh, Hugo, Oklahoma, we got uh, Lorenzo Gonzalez. He's a 78 overall. Carlos Thomas, or Thompson, excuse me, uh, from Tuckahoe, Virginia. Can't forget that. Uh, wide receiver, 78 overall. Brian Wilkerson, a 75 overall halfback from Lincoln Park, Michigan. Tyler McBride, a 73 year old overall athlete from Juneau, Alaska. Frank Smith, a 73 overall wide receiver from New Kensington, Kensington Pennsylvania. Uh, Ross Cowan, a 72 overall athlete from Forest, Mississippi. Andrew Fontenot, a 69 overall athlete from Lusk, Wyoming. John Bush, a 69 overall outside linebacker from Colonial Heights, Tennessee. Quentin Morrow, 69 overall athlete from Cape Coral, Florida. Nick Nick Nichols, <laughs> a 68 overall center from Garden City, Georgia. Wesley Reed, a 68 overall defensive end from West Springfield, Virginia. And then lastly, but certainly not leastly, uh, well, actually, kind of loosely, now I'm thinking about <laughs> uh, Anthony Wright, a 64 overall strong safety from Fort Wright, Kentucky. That's your, that's your number one class in the nation. That's actually pretty good now that I list them all out. That's a very good class. So let's move on to position changes and uh, move some people around. All right, as far as uh, position changes go, nothing crazy. Uh, here's our quarterbacks. We'll have Brian Maurer. Harrison Bailey, Ty Newby, and Waylon Park the third. And then on halfback, we'll have T. Hodge. I did move uh, Lenneth Whitehead to fullback. Um, just because we have so many halfbacks. We have no fullbacks. He's he's good by the goal line anyway, so I figure shit, might as well move him to fullback and we'll just do fullback dives or all uh, position sub or uh, formation sub him in. I don't I don't know. But uh, I figured this would help even out the running back situation a little bit. You'll see why we have so many running backs, because we have so many wide receivers also. So a lot of these guys are probably going to get cut, especially down here. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll have T. Hodge, Eric Johnson, uh, Jabari Small. So it'll probably be Jabari Small and T. Hodge, Eric Johnson coming in every now and then. And we have Brian Wilkerson, Ross Cowan, Andrew Fortnox, or Fort Fortinon or whatever. Uh, Lennon Whitehead, like I said. At wide receiver, we'll have uh, Ramel Keaton, D. Beckway, Jimmy Calloway, Cedric Tillman, Malachi Weidman, all these kids. Like, see how deep the wide receivers are. Um, tight end. There's, there's another thing. I, I tried to look for tight ends, maybe that could go over, but uh, or wide receivers that could go to tight end, but there really wasn't any. So. Um, I didn't want to do that as well. Here's a look at our offensive line. Not horrible. Not not a lot of depth, but not horrible. Going into the defense. This is before training results too, so they'll be better in a little bit. But yeah, so that's pretty much the. Uh, oh, I forgot to get a punter, so we'll have to get a punter this year for sure. Till then, McBride can do both. Best position changes. All right, training results. Ooh, Brian Maurer's a 95 overall. That's going to make things interesting. Who's going to start? We got 99 awareness. Harrison Bailey is good. 93, though. That's not a slouch by any means. Bailey's got the advantage in the arm department. Sure. Pretty much with Mauer, it's just awareness. He's a little faster than Bailey, too. Whalen Park. Doing pretty good, though. 83 overall. Redshirt freshman. 
what Harrison Bailey was last year in 1993. So, D. Hodge in 88 overall. I would have liked to see him go up a little bit. Jabari Spall, Small is now an 86. That's very good. Uh, Jaden Campbell, he's one of the guys I brought over from wide receiver just to try to level things out a little bit. He's a 71. That might save him from getting cut. Length Whitehead goes up to 70 overall fullback. But wide receiver wise, uh, Keaton gonna be 83. D back with a 92. Jimmy Callaway a 92. Cedric Tillman a 90. Malachi Weidman 87. Jalen Hyatt at 85. We got Jimmy Holiday at four or hit 83. Oh, what happened to my brain there? Uh, then some of these younger guys going up a little bit after their red shirt, red shirt season. Jacob Warren goes up to an 82, and he's going to be followed by Josh Merrill, also at an 82. Ty Keller, the redshirt freshman at left tackle, is going to be an 80. That's good. Jackson Lampley is going to get the start over, uh, yeah, <laughs> Akorogine. That's what I'm, Akorogine. That's what I'm going with. Uh, Cooper Mays at center. Then we have Jerome Carvin at right guard and Daryl Darnell Wright at right tackle. So a pretty good line, actually. Uh, Dominic Bailey's going to be starting at left end and then Greg Emerson's right end. I'm still not going to see Eric Smart. Man, we might not see him for, what, to be two years, pretty much? That sucks. I was hoping he'd come in and start right away. But, oh, well. Not always what happens. It's really good players. We're having some really good players leave this year. And we're still a very young team. Alright. So that's training results. Let's get into the cuts. Alright, we gotta cut six guys. Obviously none at quarterback. Uh, I am gonna cut... Bontanot, I think. I don't really have anything for him. So, he's a four star, but there's really nothing I can do with him. So, he's more for just, I, I don't know what to do with you than anything else. Uh, we can cut that fullback, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as these guys go, maybe Jimmy Holiday. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut Jimmy Holiday. He's a sophomore. He's got all these good players behind him. They're probably going to overtake him anyways. So, Sorry, Jimmy. No, no disrespect, Mint, but sometimes you got to be cut. It'd be like that. Hey, Thomas, bus. Cut him. Does anybody want to cut here? Not really. Gotta lose both these guys. Uh, we could cut Morvin Joseph. Let's leave him just for depth. Sure there's someone else I can cut like Charles Johnson five corners plus some safeties I think we'll be fine one more player all right we gotta go back to the wide receivers then or maybe the running backs we could probably cut probably cut Campbell sorry buddy no no disrespect but someone's got to be cut All right, so before we uh, end the off season here, I wanted to show you, uh, I decided to go with Harrison Bailey as our starting quarterback. So I had Brian Maurer transfer to Texas. Texas is uh, probably one of the biggest schools that had an opening. Uh, so there he is, Brian Maurer uh, at Texas. Um, and we wish him luck, and we'll probably see some of him later. I just probably see some keep up with his stats at the end of the season or something like that. See if he gets drafted. I don't know, but 
Good luck to Brian Maurer, and uh, yeah, we're going to move forward, though, as Harrison Bailey as our quarterback. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Have a good one.